In this video, I'm identifying 10 of my favorite wines, around $75 a bottle, and these are all going to be red wines. The first of my favorites, around $75 a bottle, is the Chapelet Signature Series Cabernet Sauvignon. Chapelet is located in the Pritchett Hill area, which is located in St. Helena in Napa. Pritchett Hill is, of course, a very famous area for high-quality Cabernet. This particular wine is about 85% Cabernet, 10% Petit Verdot, and 5% Malbec. Yes, Malbec actually does pretty well in Napa. This particular Malbec adds a nice touch of fruit to this particular blend. This wine is aged 22 months in French oak, 60% of which is new. This is a very consistent and age-worthy wine. I recently enjoyed the 2009 bottling and it was still showing extremely well and had plenty of life left. The 2018 should be available on shelves now and perhaps the 2019 as well. Both of these are excellent vintages and are well worth picking up. They might even be a touch under $75 a bottle, perhaps around $70 or so. My second favorite red wine, around $75 a bottle, is the Gigal Saint Joseph Ludi Rouge. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of Gigal and of Syrah, so this is a natural pick for me. This wine comes from the vineyard that gave Saint Joseph its name. Saint Joseph is located in the northern Rhone region of France. As such, this is a 100% Syrah red wine. This wine comes from vines that range in age from 20 to 75 years old. It's powerful and spicy spicy, but with polished tannins. It's one that could come together a little bit better with a couple more years of age on it, but after that it will certainly drink well for 12 to 13 years or so. My third favorite wine that's about $75 a bottle is actually a number of wines, specifically the Protatori del Barbaresco Reservas. In the video that I made recommending wines at around $50 a bottle, I mentioned the Protatori del Barbaresco, which sells for about $40 to $45 a bottle. But in addition to that wine, which is made every vintage, in very good vintages, Protatori also makes nine single vineyard reservas, and their policy is either to make all nine of them or not to make any of them at all. These are all excellent wines, although my favorite is a silly. In the United States, these can often be purchased for around $75 a bottle, although some of the single vineyards are a little bit more and others a little bit less. These are Nebbiola-based wines that are very age-worthy and extremely high quality and which compare very favorably to some other big-name Barbarescos that cost a lot more than this. If you can still find them in the retail channels, I would definitely recommend picking up some 2016s, as that was an absolutely stunning vintage for Prototuria and Barbaresco generally. This is a very high quality producer, even though it is a cooperative. They control about one third of the vineyards in Barbaresco, so they have some excellent fruit sources. My fourth favorite wine, around $75 a bottle, is the Cune Imperial Gran Reserva Rioja. This wine is 85% Tempranillo, and the rest is made up of a mix of Graciano and Mazuelo. It's made only in very good vintages. It's made from old vines located in one of CVNE's best vineyards in the Rioja. Rioja Alta subzone of Rioja. They use a strict fruit selection for this bottling. You just can't go wrong with this bottle. If you enjoy these picks and get value from my recommendations, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Both of those things help me out a lot more than you realize. Additionally, I was very surprised to learn that more than 75% of the people who watch my videos regularly do not subscribe to my channel. So especially if you're a regular viewer, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel because that really does help me out a lot. My fifth favorite wine, around $75 a bottle, is the Chateau La Gaffelière, which is a right bank Bordeaux from Saint Emilion. This wine is about two thirds Merlot and one third Cabernet Franc. This winery has been on a bit of a hot streak the past few vintages in particular, and one critic actually regarded the 2018 vintage for this producer as one of the wines of the vintage. 2019 and 2020 were also excellent, while the 2018 and 2019 are probably closer to $100 or so. The 2020 can still be purchased on the futures market for around $75 a bottle. This is a wine that you want to put away for at least 8 to 10 years, as it will definitely get a lot better with some additional bottle age. My sixth favorite red wine, around $75 a bottle, is the 2016 Castello di Monsanto Il Poggio Chianti Classico Gran Selezione. I recently visited Castello di Monsanto and learned a lot about their production methods and their winery. This is an excellent producer of Sangiovese-based wines at all price points, and this one is one of their higher-end bottlings. Gran Selezione is a fairly recent designation, and the winery has to satisfy three requirements to be able to call their wine a Gran Selezione. First, the wine has to be produced from a single vineyard. Second, the vineyard must be estate-owned. And third, the wine must be aged for at least 30 months. 
This is something that Castello di Monsanto had done with their Del Poggio bottling for decades anyway, since it's got a tremendous track record of being a successful quality wine. Del Poggio is a very prominent vineyard and is actually the first vineyard that was featured from the Chianti Classico region on the bottling. It's a remarkable vineyard with extremely rocky soils. When I was there, I tasted a number of the different vintages of Il Poggio, including the 72, the 78, the 98, and the 2017, and it's extraordinarily age-worthy. To my surprise, they even turned me loose in the caves and let me select a bottle of the 72, which was a lot of fun. 2016, in Tuscany generally, is an outstanding vintage, and certainly for this particular bottling, it's one that I highly recommend, and the 2017 is excellent as well. So the Il Poggio Chianti Classico from Castello di Monsanto is just an excellent wine for the price, pretty much year in and year out, but you definitely want to pay close attention to the 2016 in particular. My seventh favorite red wine, around $75 a bottle, is the Ridge Estate Cabernet Sauvignon. Ridge is an iconic California winery that has operations in both Sonoma and the Santa Cruz Mountain areas. They have numerous excellent wines, but my favorite wines from Ridge are the Cabernet-based wines from the Montebello Vineyard in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Montebello is the more expensive and highly regarded bottling, but this estate Cabernet Sauvignon is made from the grapes that don't make it into the Montebello and is also a wine of excellent quality year in and year out, and one that can be had for around $70, $75 a bottle. It's Cabernet Sauvignon dominant, but it also has some Merlot and Petit Verdot. This is one that you'll likely need to purchase directly from the winery, however, as it's made in smaller quantities, and I'm not sure that there's enough of it to make it to retail. When coming up with these lists, I try to identify wines from a variety of countries and also from different regions. And so my next selection comes from a land down under. My eighth favorite red wine, around $75 a bottle, is the Hickenbotham Truman Cabernet Sauvignon from McLaren Vale, Australia. McLaren Vale is a highly regarded region in South Australia. This particular bottling comes from grapevines that were planted in 1971 and are thus around 50 years old. It's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. It's aged in 75% new French oak. It shows well young, but it's capable of aging up to 15 years or more. Definitely a very, very enjoyable Cabernet Sauvignon. My ninth favorite red wine, around $75 a bottle, is Chateau Grand Puy Lacoste. This is a fifth growth from the left bank of Bordeaux, and specifically from Poyat. Vineyards are planted to about 75% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Merlot, and 5% Petit Verdot. So while the assemblage will vary each particular year, it will definitely be close to 75% Cabernet Sauvignon or so. This estate was completely upgraded and overhauled about 15 years ago, both in the winery and in the vineyards and that resulted in a tremendous quality improvement. The 2009 and 2010 vintages, for example, are stellar, and if you can pick those up, I highly recommend them, even though they'll definitely cost more than $75 a bottle. This winery is in an excellent neighborhood, as its neighbors are both Ponte Canet and Lynch Bosch, which are also two of my favorite producers. This is a classic and age-worthy wine, and the last few vintages are all excellent, and the 2020 can be purchased on Futures for around $75 a bottle. My next favorite wine, around $75 a bottle or so, is the Jaboulet Hermitage Le Maison Bleu. This is another wine from the Northern Rhone region of France, specifically the Hermitage region. This wine comes from vines that are located on the east side of the Hermitage Hill. Many of the most famous vineyards in Hermitage are on the west side, so with this wine you get a little bit of a price break because the vineyard sources aren't quite as prestigious. This wine is 100% Syrah. They use no more than 15% new oak, so it's definitely one that's not overly oaky. As a result, it shows better young than many Hermitage wines. It's handled in the exact same way as the iconic La Chapelle bottling. It's full-bodied, dark, powerful, and opulent. It's better with a few years of bottle age, but it will have no trouble lasting 20 years or more. If you're interested in bumping things up just a little bit and spending about $100 a bottle, be sure to check out my favorite red wines at about $100 a bottle.